The Army plans to modernize its force structure to shift from counterterrorism and counterinsurgency to a focus on confronting China and Russia. A new pilot program aims to fill the current gaps in cavalry design. Major General John Richardson is the commanding general of the Army's 1st Cavalry Division. General, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mimi. Great to, uh, great to be here, and I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this. Well, tell us a little bit about what motivated you to start thinking about changes to your division. Well, it's really the, it's the, the Army has looked at uh, changes that needed to be made as we looked at the, the threat of, uh, of uh, great power competition versus uh, an era of uh, fighting counterinsurgency and, and counterterrorism, as you mentioned in, in the opening. And so uh, as the Army looked at it at, at, our, our, at Fort Leavenworth, they determined we had gaps in uh, our formations because we had reorganized uh, for combat to fight a counterinsurgency. And I think the best way to, to frame it is to talk about battlefield framework. Uh, and that is uh, during the Cold War, as we prepared to, to uh, fight the Soviet Union, uh, we talked about a close fight and a deep fight uh, and a rear fight. And so we broke the battlefield up uh, literally uh, into these different components. And the close fight would be what you think of a uh, platoon, a company, a battalion, or a brigade would execute. And that's uh, moving to a position of relative advantage uh, in close combat. And then the deep fight would have been the division and the core, and that's attacking in depth, uh, deeper into the enemy's rear. Uh, the purpose of it in the 80s and 90s with the doctrine and with the equipment that we had at that point was really trying to separate echelons so, so that a brigade would only have to fight one element at a time so they could defeat them in, in detail. And the division and the corps would attack deeper in depth to slow down the enemy so the brigades could fight one at a time. Well, so, then so, but General, does this mean that we're just gonna go back to how things were in the Cold War, force structure-wise, and, and how things are set up? Yes and no. Uh, yes, we are going to have to restructure our divisions uh, for large-scale combat operations because the Cold War was going to be a large-scale combat operation. What potentially uh, the fight of the future with a, a, a near peer uh, would be large-scale combat operations. So there are certain elements that have to be reestablished uh, in our formations. The difference is we're talking about multi-domain operations now. We've added space. We've added cyber. Uh, and we've added some, some capabilities, long range precision fires that we didn't have in the 80s and 90s. So while we rebuild the division to fight as a division, we also take into consideration the changes in technology and then how that will apply. What it does is it re recreates this idea of a close and deep fight. The deep fight might not be about separating an echelon like it was in the Cold War. Now it's about penetrating the enemy's air defense, integrated air defense artillery, uh, their integrated fires capabilities, so that we can then penetrate with our, our brigade combat teams, close with and then destroy the enemy by exploiting uh, that success and then winning decisively. So can you give us a little bit more specifics about what will be different um, in the weapons, the equipment, the organization um, in this new design that you're discussing at the division level? So I think it's mo mostly about organization. Uh, we are, of course, we have Army Futures Command and we are building a, a more modern Army uh, and the Department of the Army, uh, the, the Department of the Army is well on its way on uh, modernizing for 2030, 2035. Uh, but right now it's more about organizational structure. And, and what we did to fight the counterinsurgency, uh, because it really wasn't a quote deep fight, it was, a, you know, counterinsurgency is, is a, a local fight. And so we broke up the capabilities of a division and pushed them down into the brigade combat teams, military intelligence, signal, uh, artillery, uh, in a, in a large-scale combat operation, 
a lot of those capabilities need to be centralized at the division so that we can fight this deep fight. And so what we're, what we're seeing is a reconsolidation of a lot of the assets that we pushed down to the brigade combat team so that they could more effectively fight a counterinsurgency. And now we were consolidating them back at the division so that for large scale combat operations, we can fight the deep fight to set the conditions for the brigade combat teams that have the primary role of winning that close fight um, with the tanks, the Bradleys, the Apaches, uh, the artillery. General, I wonder what you've learned from watching Russia execute this war in Ukraine that you can apply to American uh, army force structures. So, I, I, you know, as we watch this play out with Russia, if, if nothing else, it has validated much of what our doctrine states, and that is it requires combined arms at the decisive point. Uh, and uh, in, when I say combined arms, I'm talking uh, logistics, the ability to integrate uh, maneuver forces, so infantry and armor with uh, fires, which is artillery, uh, and then uh, the integration of and the, and the teaming of infantry and armor. Uh, and I think we were seeing that uh, in spades well, in Ukraine, uh, the, the Russians' inability to do this synchronization and integration. And I think that that is what's so powerful about the United States Army uh, is, is our ability uh, to synchronize and integrate combined arms to maximize the effect at the decisive point. And, uh, and so uh, as we look at what the Russians are going through, uh, definitely we are checking off uh, the lessons learned on, on what not to do and, and really doubling down on what we do well. All right, well, General, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mimi. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.